I've got a cute little mathematical fact for you, which you might like. Every positive integer can be written as the sum of three palindrome numbers. And I've learned that cute little mathematical fact from this paper. A palindrome number is something we have talked about before. It's a number that's the same forwards and backwards. Uh, as an example, something like 121 or 937,000. 739 would be a palindrome number, they go forwards and backwards. This paper states that any positive integer can be written as the sum of three palindrome numbers. Uh, and just to show you, let's do an example. So uh, I actually set Brady up for this, we did an, ex an example in advance. I asked you for a significant number. Uh, I was hoping for your bank details or something like that, but you gave me a date. And uh, actually, I was quite surprised that you gave me this date. I, I like it. I like it a lot. You gave me this date, which was 30.04.1777. I had to ask you what that date was, and you told me it was Gauss' birthday. Gauss, one of our great mathematicians. I'm finally converting you, Brady. You wouldn't have said that seven years ago. So <laughs> let's, let's do this. We're going to write this number. We just treat it as a number. We're going to write it as the sum of three palindrome numbers, just to give you the idea. 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, plus the next number will be 9, 3, 0, 5, 0, 3, 9. And the third number will be 6, 3, 6, 6, 3, 6. Each one of those is a palindrome number, forwards and backwards, they are the same, and if you add them up, you get our target number here at the top. The thing is, the reason I didn't do this live is because in this paper it explains how to do it, which involves 40 pages of algorithms and special cases. So if you wanna learn how to do this, great, go for it, but you're gonna to have to memorize 40 pages of special algorithms. So I didn't do that. What I did do is I used a website that was made by a friend of mine. Uh, so Christian Lawson Perfect made a website so that you can try this out for yourself and you can enter any number you want and it's gonna give you the three palindrome numbers as described by the algorithms in this paper. Let's do uh, an example here. I'm gonna enter the first few digits of pi. Three, one, four, one, five, nine, two. The website will run these algorithms for us so that I can write it out for us. So we've got two, two, zero, 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 two, two, plus nine, two, six, six, two, nine, plus, and here's our third number, one, four, nine, four, one. Palindrome numbers, three of them, and if you add them up, you get our target number. The paper guarantees that you can always do this. You can do this in any base as well. This is not just base 10. So the paper actually proved it for any base. In fact, the paper proved it for any base greater than five. And the small bases, two, three, and four, that was done by someone else in a different paper. But it's kind of unsatisfying when I'm saying these algorithms exist and I'm not even showing you them. So I thought I would show you one of them. I'll do an example with the algorithm as explained in the paper. So let's do the example I've just done here with the first few digits of pi, and uh, we'll see how it works out according to the paper. Okay, that's our target. So that's our, that's our n, let's call it n as our number. We're gonna create three palindrome numbers. Uh, I'm gonna call them x, y, and z. If you use the paper, each number is categorized into a type. So you're gonna to have to find out what type of number this is. So you go through the paper, you look it up, uh, and if you do that, it's called a type A3 number. So this is type A3, and that means you have a one in the second place. It means the two ends are different, and it means the first digit is greater than two. So with those conditions, that's called a type A3 number. And then if you look at the paper, it tells you how to start off the three palindrome numbers. And it tells you that the first number is going to start with a two. It's going to be one less. The first digit will be one less than the first digit of your target. Your second palindrome number is going to start with a nine here in the second column. And that's always going to be true with this type of number, A3. And the third palindrome number is going to start with a one. 
and that has come from the difference between the two ends of the target number. So we're starting with a one. Now you have to use the paper and look up which algorithm to use, because there's a whole bunch of algorithms to use. This is actually algorithm one. So let's use algorithm one to complete these palindrome numbers. For free, you automatically get the last digits, because they're palindromes. So if it starts with a two, it ends with a two. Here, if it starts with a nine, it ends with a nine. Starts with a one here, it ends with a one here. And does this add up? It looks like it does. I've got one plus nine plus two would give me a two here and a carry of one. Actually, I might write that down. I'll put a carry of one, I'll have a carry row. Also, if you use this algorithm, it tells you to put in the first number right in the middle, which if I can get, get the middle of this, so it must be there. It, puts you, it tells you to put a zero right there in the middle. It's like you're doing a Sudoku. It is a bit like a Sudoku, yeah. If you look at the algorithms in the paper, they're really mind-bending. They're like, what's going on now? They're doing this, they're doing that, because they're explaining every step in really particular mathematical language, especially because they're trying to do it so that you can do it for any base as well. But this, what I'm doing, is kind of like a Sudoku. That's kind of the gist of it. So we've got a gap to fill in the second column. I want a one up there. Let's just fill it with a two. Then I would have nine plus two would give me 11. There'd be a one there. There'd be a carry of one. And that's good news because that means that column, that first column adds up nicely. And for that second column, we don't want a carry because then it wouldn't work. Let's put a zero here for the carry. Is there anything else we can discover? Well, automatically you have a two over there, which puts a two over there as well. Now at this point, I think it gets a little bit difficult. I think for this digit here, the second digit of the second palindrome, I think we're gonna have a choice for this. Now the algorithm tells you what to put in. So I'll just follow the algorithm. I think you could perhaps have a choice, but the algorithm tells you to put a two in that position. If you get a two over there, you automatically get a two over here. So maybe we can complete this column now with one and nine. I've got a carry of one. I've got a two and a two. So I must need a four here. And the next carry would be a zero down here, I believe. Automatically, you get a four over there. For this column, let's see, I want a four. I've got most of it. Depends what the carry number is down here. I'm going to assume, and this is what the paper tells you to do. It tells you to assume it's a one. And if it's, if it's not a one, you're gonna fix it later. That means if I add that column up, uh, I'll need a zero in that position. So that adds up to four and automatically you get a zero in that position. We've completed the first palindrome. Now, what's missing? Well, we've got this missing digit here. The paper does tell you to put in uh, a carry of one if you don't know. So if we say that's a carry of one, we want this to add up. Well, we've got five, we want a one. So we're going to have to put in a six there and then automatically a six there, and that completes the second palindrome number. And now we've just one, got one last digit to fill in. So we wanna fill in this last column. So we need a five, I've got a six, uh, I've got a carry of zero, so that must be a nine right there. That fills in the last palindrome number, and you should double check that it works out, but in this case we've been lucky. It does work out, if you add up these numbers, you get our target number, these were a couple of assumptions that we made. If they were wrong, we can fix it at this step. And the paper does tell you how to fix the number if you need to make an adjustment, but we have been lucky here. That completes it. And that is an example of the kind of algorithms you would have to memorize if you want to do every possible number. How many have you memorized? Uh, I've memorized one, which I've just done there. Hi everyone, we'd just like to say our thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode. Brilliant is a website that I completely love. I love just browsing it. They've got lots of stuff on there. Stuff that's free, you can look at any time. I particularly enjoy their Problem of the Week, which come at different levels of hardness. I'd recommend having a look at that one. But they've also got these great courses and lessons and quizzes, which are just beautifully designed, really elegant, but also designed very cleverly to make you smarter. That's what Brilliant's all about. It's not just about doing tests and seeing what your scores are. It's about changing the way you think, changing the way you attack problems, getting you to think a little bit more outside the box. And if you enjoyed the video you just watched, the number theory course in particular might be one for you. Go and have a look at them at brilliant.org slash numberphile 
As I said, there's loads of stuff on the site that's free, but if you go to brilliant.org slash number file, you can actually sign up to their premium service for 20% off, and that gives you access to everything, all the good stuff. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode. People who wrote the paper said that this was a, a kind of a mathematical folklore thing. Uh, so it was something that they had heard of before. And obviously, if you play around with it, you can always do it. It's always true, but it hadn't been proven to be true before this. Uh, and apparently it took them all these algorithms to prove every possible case.